guys, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look into low FODMAP vegan proteins. So I know many people with IBS um, are actually vegetarian, um, and some people are also vegan um, as well, but I know the vegan diet is really tricky when you've got IBS, um, but I know that there are people um, who want to go onto a plant-based diet that have IBS, but really just don't know what they can eat and especially making sure you get enough protein is very important. So in this video I'm going to be talking about um, low FODMAP vegan proteins and I'm going to be doing a separate video on high FODMAP vegan proteins so do keep a look out for that because you're going to want to avoid them. Okay, so my name is Samantha, if I didn't say already. <laughs> um, I have IBS and endometriosis and I do a ton of research on both of these just to try and help you guys. Um, just, I hope that I can make your lives a bit easier and I've been receiving some some comments from people that are saying the videos are helping and that means the world to me, like that's why I do it. I don't really make anything from my videos, you know, I don't make money, like I'm just doing this because I know what it's like to suffer with it um, and I want to help you guys and if I can grow um, a channel then great, um, that's just really a um, benefit of you know, helping you guys. So let's get started with this video then. So there's about seven proteins that are low in FODMAPs. And one of the main ones is tofu. Now with tofu, you can get a high FODMAP tofu and a low FODMAP one. Low FODMAP tofu is the non-silken version um, that has had its water drained out of it. When the water is drained out of tofu, it removes the high FODMAPs. So you want to be trying to go for a firm tofu, but just really make sure that you're avoiding silken tofu, and therefore it will be a low FODMAP tofu. The next one is tempeh, or tempeh. I'm not actually sure how to say it. Um, so yeah, it is spelled T-E-M-P-E-H. Um, so that is also low FODMAP. Now the next two are corn mints, um, which is obviously, you probably all have heard of corn. Um, many corn products are high in FODMAPs, but their mints isn't. So do give that a go, it's actually quite nice. You can make a really nice bolognese with it or lasagna. Um, I actually do make um, a lot of low FODMAP vegetarian um, meals. So if you do want any like videos on um, recipes um, and stuff, then let me know because I will do that and I'll start cooking for you. <laughs> um, you know, it could be something a bit different. If you guys do want to see that from me anyway, just let me know. Um, and I'd gladly do that for you. And it's actually pretty tasty, even if I say so myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, corn mints is a really good one um, to have if you're um, vegetarian or vegan um, and you're on a low FODMAP diet. Now the next one is soy protein milk. We've then got canned lentils and chickpeas. Um, you'll also have heard about like lentils not being good, it's dried lentils um, are high in FODMAPs. Um, but the ones that are canned and like in water um, are meant to be much lower in FODMAPs. So yeah, canned chickpeas and lentils are a good source of vegan protein um, that is low FODMAP. Now the last two um, are nuts and seeds and then grains. Um, nuts and seeds uh, generally are low FODMAP. There are a few nuts and seeds that are actually a little bit higher in FODMAPs. Um, for example, peanuts, um, they are a bit higher in FODMAPs. But things like almonds, um, Brazil nuts, hazelnuts, many seeds as well um, are actually low in FODMAPs. You just need to be a little bit careful with portions sometimes. Some of you may find that nuts and seeds are a problem for you, I'm not saying like it's guaranteed, but generally, um, these are low in FODMAP, so you should find that they don't really set off IBS symptoms. You know, you may find that they do for you personally, that can happen, so just avoid it if it is. Um, and just go a little bit careful with nuts and seeds, like, you know, don't overdo it. But generally, nuts and seeds are classed as low FODMAP. So the last one on the list is grains, um, which is things like rice and quinoa or quinoa as some people call it. That's also low in FODMAPs as well um, and is a good source of vegan protein. Um, so do try some of these out. 
um, if you are vegan or if you're wanting to just eat less meat um, but you're not sure what you can have because you've got IBS these are really good alternatives I, um, for those of you that don't know, I have IBS D <coughs> bog bound bonanzas and all that, you know <laughs> so and the thing is, my point is, anyway, I'm kind of rambling, is that I can eat a lot of these and I've got a really sensitive stomach um, with things that can set me off and actually, like, I can eat everything on this list. Personally, I have to be slightly careful with lentils, but it's more like dried ones um, and stuff. But most things on this list I can have and I've got really bad IBSD, so don't worry. Um, calls for all different, but do give it a go and just try and find out what works for you. But these are classed as low FODMAP vegan proteins. Um, so that is the end of this video. If you've enjoyed it or if it's helped you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I make at least one video a week um, on this channel and I'm looking to upload more. Um, drop any video or comments below, like video requests I mean. Um, you know, if you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments as well. It'd be really nice to um, hear from you and interact with you a bit more as well. Um, and yeah. I look forward to seeing you next time and thank you for watching this video.